This is what fall is all about, man. Gloomy days, big winds, putting a jig in your hand and just going to work. That's right. That's right. There's two or three of them there just pressed right up against that big thick weed edge. Look at that fish, dude. Sometimes if you scratch their belly, oh, he likes that. See, he put his little fin up there. <laughs> Check, check, check. Mic check, one, two. What is going on, guys? We are back with another video today. What are we doing today? I guess this is my last day at home for a little while for make a little road trip, little mid-fall, I guess you can call it early fall road trip. Um, I was kind of wondering what to do to it. Do I just work in the office? Do I do some maintenance on some things? Do I do some stuff around the house? Or do I find an excuse to go fishing? That uh, was what we obviously ended up doing or we wouldn't have the camera in front of my face. But it is uh, one of the last days of September right now. Um, we got air temp 55 degrees right now. Water temp slowly dropping and today really just want to tie on a jig and just go into some fundamentals on jig fishing. Uh, don't have a ton of time, so I'm not gonna catch like 30 fish today. That's the realistic truth. But uh, I'm gonna go to a lake, which I have not been to the entire year. And, uh, but this lake normally has a good um, fall bite in the weeds. And that's a pattern you see happening on a lot of different lakes in the fall, is that a lot of these fish really make a big time resurgence back into the weeds in the fall time. And this bite's just kind of kicking off everywhere. It's gonna get a lot better. Um, as water temps continue to drop. But really just kind of want to tie in a jig today, talk about some jig fish and stuff that I like. You know, everything I talk about on this channel is based around just my personal experience doing something. Um, so yeah, I just kind of like to go into some of that stuff and hopefully set the hook a few times today. So um, hopefully you guys will kind of enjoy it. Should be kind of a fun little video, hopefully. As you can see outside, the colors in the trees are starting to pop a lot. So stay tuned. We'll be at the lake in a few minutes here. Um, let's catch a few walleyes. All righty. Is this not the most fall looking day you guys have ever seen? Heavy overcast. Big wind, not a giant lake, so it doesn't look super windy out, but little storm coming this afternoon, little front coming, and the trees are lit up. Water temp, 61 degrees right now. Now, jig fishing, in my opinion, one huge part of jig fishing is not, has anything to do with the jig, but this bite, a lot of times this, there's two kinds of walleye bites generally that happen in the fall, a shallow one and a deep one. Especially on a lot of these lakes. This is just a wonky camera setup right here. But when you're fishing these shallow water bites, side imaging, side imaging, side imaging is one of those just crucial things. Um, pieces of the puzzle to jig fishing. Because whenever you're fishing shallow water, as you guys know, generally you lean on side imaging a lot to find fish. So what we're gonna do first here is just putt around a bit hope to see that side imaging light up with some walleyes or some fish somewhere up here on some of these sandy weed flats and uh, hopefully start pitching at a few. Oh, oh, that's what we're looking for. That's what we're looking for. See how there's weeds right here, weeds right here, and fish is right there. Super easy to mark, scroll over, waypoint, boom. You zoom in on those, you're gonna, it's gonna see like that nice classic little walleye school. Now, if you're a fish in small inland lakes, these are the kind of schools you're after. You're not after schools of 200 fish most of the time. So just get that right out of your head. This isn't crazy, insane -o. We always get so many comments, Tom, I wanna see you go fish a small lake that has a low density of walleyes. We're here. Almost every third video you guys watch is on a lake like that. And we're gonna wheel back around and start fishing for those fish. Now, I enjoy fishing off forward facing. If you don't, or if you don't have it, because we're gonna start getting the comments now that are gonna start saying, 
oh, the secret to catching them on a jig is to have you know, a forward-facing sonar. Not at all. We're catching fish for decades just off side imaging. You got the wind coming this way right now. So what you do is the second you see those fish, boom, spot lock, and then you're sharp shooting off your side imaging beam to right where those fish are. I enjoy fishing off forward facing. It's just something I really like and I really enjoy. So I like to fish that way, but you don't obviously have to fish that way. Now comes time, and I think this is one overlooked part when people talk about jig fishing. Rod and actual jig setup. A lot of times people think of jig fishing, I think they just think of plopping a jig out the side of the boat, you know, twitching it around back, you know, back to them. But it is a pretty precise and tactical thing, especially the way technology is, where either you're fishing off side imaging or you're fishing off forward facing, where you're trying to make very pinpointed, precise casts and work a bait in a very specific zone, essentially. And there's kind of two setups I really like for this. And I got both of them right here. Now, one of these rods is a 7.3 medium light. And one of these rods is a 6.9 medium light fast. And uh, this is a 6.9, this is a 7.3. When, when do I like one, when do I like the other? A lot of times when I'm making really long casts across um, areas that are pretty void of weeds, I seem to really like the 7.3. Um, this is one of my favorite all-time like finesse jig fishing rods. This is the Elliott line. I'll link both these down below. But um, what you get with this little bit longer, little bit softer rod at the tip is that you can make really long casts with a light live bait presentation. And I really like that about this rod. And the other thing I really like about it is that it's got such a soft tip when a fish picks it up off bottom and you go to pop again, you're going to see that rod just kind of like, just kind of load a little bit real soft. And I really like that about this lighter action rod. Now, today we're going to be making, it's obviously, the wind's probably around 20, 25. You can't really tell because we're on a smaller lake, but it's kind of gusty. I'm going to fish the 6.9 medium light fast. Now, this rod has a much quicker tip. It doesn't, it's not as soft up here. So what that lets me kind of do is like do a lot of these real short, immediate actions. So like if I'm fishing real close to the boat like this, Let's be kind of do a lot of this stuff, like real finesse type of twitching, which if I'm target casting a lot of fish, like, oh, there's one fish. Oh, there's two fish over here. Or if I'm pitching off side imaging, it lets me kind of do a lot of this like really precise movement because I have a lot less play in that tip right there. So those are kind of the two rods I really like. Both these rods, I, I like rigging up a 10 pound braid. My new favorite braid is a suffix. It's called 131. A little bit more expensive braid in my opinion, but it's very soft and supple it's very soft and like it doesn't make a lot of noise in the guides number one very thin but it's very it's not like a coarse braid like a lot of the other braids we're fishing pretty clear water so i tie that into a, a long like six or seven foot 10 pound fluorocarbon leader down to a little old-fashioned quarter ounce google eye right there jig weight important um fishing shallow like this i like quarter or eighth ounce stuff. If it was real calm out, I'd just go to a straight up uh, eighth ounce probably because we're fishing a lot of this like seven to, you know, 10-ish feet of water right in there. And then we're just gonna pair it. I did not get a lot of minnows today because I didn't think I was gonna be fishing for very long. And the last thing I wanted was for a whole bunch of minnows to die in my live well. If you know, you know. But we're fishing in fall. I like fishing a lot of these sucker minnows or you know, creek chub type minnows or shiners, bigger bait than, you know, you fish for a lot of the season. And hooking it, pretty simple. In through the mouth, very important, up through the skull. Now there's other ways to do it, but when I'm imparting all the action and doing a lot of casting, I like hooking them like that because they stay on about a million times better. Fit it on the way down, boys. Right there. Fish on. I don't think we got a super big one, but a nice, oh yeah, nice full walleye right there. He's all sorts of angry. We'll take it, man. You could just see there was three, four of them sitting there kind of right on top of the weeds. 
and I was right in that little void in which we saw him in. And he was never in a million years gonna come off. Hooked very good. That is one reason I like fishing long shank jigs. I don't like fishing those little gum, like gumball style or like real short shank live bait jigs for this, especially when you're using bigger minnows. Definitely better to have more hook in my opinion. And when you're fishing big minnows, very important to have beefy hook like you have on this Google. I mean, you can see that as a thick wire hook on there. Oh, there's one. Got him. Fish on, boys. That's just a single fish out there. Nice keeper size one if you were going to keep one. But, you know, this is kind of what the fall deal is about on a lot of these smaller lakes. Just coming out and hammering a whole bunch of these guys up in some shallower water. Where they haven't been for most seasons. 16 inch right there. One thing you want to do is, like, uh... When you're fishing these bigger minnows, one thing I'm not doing is just like when I feel that tick, I don't just like set the hook right away like I would like with a plastic or a, a smaller jig in a minnow. Most of the time what I'm doing, there's a nice little walleye right there. Feel that tick or feel that you have a fish and I'll just drop my rod like a one, two, three, then kind of swing into them. Especially if it's more fish like these normal inland size lake fish where you know they're 15 to 20 inches long. It takes them a second to kind of mold that bigger minnow but obviously it is working quite well right now That's right, that's right, that's feeling good. He's angry, he's gonna be a nice fall walleye. Oh yeah, really nice one here, dude, really nice fish. I had a feeling that was gonna be a better one. Come here, bud, we got everything rolling. There was two or three of them there just pressed right up against that big thick weed edge. Look at that fish, dude, <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, yes. That is what we are after right there. That is fall jig fishing to a T. You know, a lot of times when I'm pitching these big, thick, heavy weeds, I'll take a couple casts at things that look like this in here. Where you see a couple high marks, like that's definitely a walleye right there. And a lot of times you'll catch those fish or you'll put a bait on them and you'll see them move right away. We'll give you guys a look at this one, that. This is a good walleye right there. The old Google eye right in the corner. I love, love, love these real dark gold ones up here. <laughs> you get in a lot of these Northwoods lakes. See if we could do all the tricks to get them to stand up as, sometimes if you scratch their belly, oh, he likes that. See, he put his fiddle fin up there. <laughs> that is a nice walleye right there. I'm digging that, man. Fall is here, fall jig bites are on. Good as it gets my friends good as it gets and i am loving loving the weather today see you later mama angry right off that weed edge when you see weeds like that it looks like it's bottom if i kind of crank this down it looks like this is bottom right here that's actually a big milfoil edge and contrary to popular belief Fish love milfoil. They love relating to milfoil. Now, obviously, milfoil can, like, take over a lake, but they love that kind of stuff, and you can obviously see that edge very clear. Obviously, no weeds there. Thick, heavy weeds right there. If I pan this way, you're going to lose the weeds again. Fish love relating to right there, right on that edge. You can kind of see there's another one probably right there. Maybe another fish tucked up in there right in here. 
that's a lot of times what you're pitching, especially on a lot of these lakes that don't have a ton of fish. You'll see little schools of four or five walleyes jammed up on those milfoil edges real tight when everything else is kind of fringe weed or sand. Quick little run onto greener pastures. In the fall, if you are not around fish and catching fish, it is time to move. It is not really a waiting game situation. Because most of the time when you start getting declining water temps in a day that looks like this, fish are going to bite when you get around them. So don't get too caught up on sitting on spots that you're not getting bit on. That is definitely a worthwhile piece of advice. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Eat it. Got him. <laughs> Dude, is there anything better than standing on the bow of boat on a windy fall day? Is this a walleye? What the heck do we got going on here? Why does this feel so goofy? That was bizarre. Now he's coming in. I know we got a walleye here. Oh yeah, it's just a really good walleye. It's just a really good one. Come here, bud. Come here, buddy. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, like a kid again. It's windy, it's cold. It's almost October. We're sitting in 11 feet of water. We're clocking big walleyes right now. That's as good as it gets, my friends. It is a drug, it is a sickness, it is addiction when you're able to, I just absolutely love these kind of like windy, kind of, you know, just your typical fall day. Windy, cold, overcast, walleyes chomping jigs and minnows. This is exactly what I wanted out of today. And it's such a simple pattern, man, and it's just the deal in the fall, you know? Beautiful, beautiful, I like that. There's a bite. Dude, they're on fire right now. Oh, he's just running with it too. Dude, give me more of this. <laughs> Absolutely love it, dude. Absolutely love it. These fish are all fired up and you can see them all sitting out there. Here's my weeds right here. There's my fish fighting. Here's my weeds and then there's all that school of fish sitting just off the edge. And it's every cast right now. And they're all super nice ones they're all super nice got everything rolling it's always kind of the stressful part when you really get it happening here i mean look at these things dude everyone is as good as the next one i've caught three cookie cutter 23 to 24 inches so far in about the last four casts that i am all about it wow 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 that one 100 got tried to get eaten by a muskie or something at some point but <laughs> we got him now look at that man i'm having too much fun it's blowing probably about 25 gusted 30 now i mean it is windy uh, one thing i'll say is this boat has been an absolute dream this season look at that dude golden walleye swimming back down so when you stand on the bow or anywhere in this boat in wind i've never seen a boat that just like stays just glued to where it is you hit that spot lock button to start pitching and you standing up there and it's just like fishing from the dock. It makes my job so much easier being in this boat. It is one of the, I mean, it's obviously a boat control, just marvel 
honestly, to be in this thing. And this year, I've said it like a hundred times, but it feels like I have the right tool for the job. You know, it feels like this is the boat that was designed for the way in which I like to fish. Fish some small water, fish some big water, and do a lot of casting um, on fish and things like that. No way, dude, right off the bat. Got him. Fish, oh, dude. This is getting crazy. This is getting out of control now. I mean, just nice walleye after nice walleye after nice walleye, man. We'll flip him on in. That is as good as it gets right now. It's just starting to rain. I don't really know what else to say. I mean, we're just absolutely throttling these fish. And they're still just sitting there. They refuse to leave, as you guys can see. Look at all those fish on the graph, man. Wow. Now what I really want to do real quick here is kind of show you guys what we're looking at. Oh, that's all wonky. Give you guys a little context here. As far as what we're looking at on the graph, that'll have to do for now. So you can obviously see solid weeds here off the left. Now the second I get outside of these weeds, somewhere up in front of me here, I should start seeing all these fish I was just pitching at. At least that is the hope here, if they're still even here. We did obviously do quite a number on them. All right, so right here, I don't know how you guys can see this. These are my fish right here. You can see all cut back into them real quick so you guys can see them a little bit better but they're right out on where the sand meets the weeds plain sand meets weeds otherwise known as the weed edge and i'll cover back this way and you should be able to see just this big school somewhere it'll probably pop up right in here i'm assuming yep right there that is money in the fall right there that is what we like to see Weed edge right like that, big pot of fish, 12 feet of water on that edge right there. And I'll take that seven days a week. Man. That is what I love to see right there. And it still looks like that after we caught all those fish. Look at all the fish over here too. Absurd, we found a big school actually. This is so bizarre to see a school of fish this big in a lake this size. But hey, once in a while you get lucky. Well guys, not a whole lot else to say. Hope you guys enjoyed that little uh, two hour mission. Fished three spots, first spot caught a fish or two, second spot caught a fish, third spot walloped them and landed on a big school of fish. And uh, these, it's all, oh, it just started raining out or we probably would have stayed out there longer. But um, these are the kind of days in the fall. It's the days that look gross and disgusting, um, cold, windy, frontal stuff coming in a big wind that's been happening for several days kind of in the same direction those are the kind of days that normally these fish really pop we got camera going everywhere here but hopefully you guys kind of enjoyed watching this one i'm headed back to the shop do some editing pack some stuff up and get on the road to go get uh bob around in the wind all week kept doing a whole bunch more walleye fishing obviously so hopefully you guys enjoyed this one thank you guys for all the continued support um, put a little bit of that side imaging stuff in there today If you guys like that kind of content or if you want like my mega live settings and all that kind of stuff Make sure you get over to the walleye now app because we do that stuff like got multiple times a week on there filming stuff like that these breakdown videos uh, But figured it was a good time to kind of give some of that stuff out um, Or film a quick video like this for YouTube, but like I said if you like this high information high graph work type of content there's mountains of it on the wall i now have so appreciate you guys watching this one thank you guys for all the continued support um don't know where it'll be no i do kind of know it'll be next but we'll just leave it till we get there and surprise you guys so appreciate you guys watching this one if you're not yet please subscribe stay tuned for more content we'll see you guys next time